universal force, changing lifestyles and fashions and even our economy. And nowhere is the disco revolution more evident or more crowded than at New York Studio 54, where controversial co-owner Steve Rubell is one part host and one part casting director. What we do is we try and make this like a play, and we want to get the right cast of characters so that everybody has a good time for them, so that not one group is dominant. Because when you have one monogamous group where you just have people who are one type, there's nothing more boring than a room full of celebrities or a room full of anything. There's no energy shortage here, where each night the gas line is traded for the ticket line. But where odd and even numbers won't do you any good. Not even on a rainy New York night. I want to get in. <laughs> I'd like to see the owner. I came 3,000 miles. I want to get in here. I drove an hour and a half. I got an invitation. I want to be in the hottest spot in town. I have been here many a nights and I talk to people from all over the world. And their ultimate dream is to get in 54. Just like Charleston was in the 20s, Boogie Woogie in the 40s, uh, the early rock years, this goal is the thing today. I don't care. They'll bury me here before I'll leave. The latest innovation by the disco promoters is a new record called A Night at Studio 54. They're trying to cash in on the club's popularity by selling an album of non-stop disco music. The Studio 54 album will be just as though you're out there. The same album, the other thing will be missing. With an E? Steve, yeah. the record. Well, hopefully one other thing will be missing. You won't have to stand in the rain to play your own stereo. Reporting from the center of the 33 and a third disco revolution, I'm Chuck Ashman.